the little things that make us giants in our industry. We put in that extra mile of service so your car can go that extra mile of performance. Our aim is to make our stopovers feel like home. Giant Petroleum. Limitless Energy. Hello guys, my name is DJ Ola7 Owen, we're Commodore of the Chief Air Marshal here on your number one podcast show in the land, the Ola7 Podcast Show. And we have got, you know, uh, an exclusive interview here on the Ola7 Podcast Show with the guy, the man, man of the moment, his name is uh, Temba Gorimbo, and uh, you know, <laughs> uh, this guy, uh, he's been trending like in the United States, all over the world, should I say. Yeah, all over the world. He's big now, and he's proud to be a Zimbabwean. And I'm proud to be Zimbabwean, and I'm proud to be hosting <laughs> Temba on my show tonight. <laughs> this guy. And, uh, you know, uh, he's a um, mixed martial arts champion. He recently won his uh, third bout in the uh, Ultimate Fighting Champion UFC. He's here to tell us more. My brother, Temba, how are you? My brother, how are you doing, man? <laughs> I'm good, I'm good, That's man. a long introduction, the longest introduction it I did, ever It did, it did. You know, yeah. you're, you're a big man. You deserve that long intro. It's I'm not a big shot. man. I'm not a big man. Mm -hmm. Not yet. Not yet. I don't, think, I don't think I'll ever be a big man. I'll just be an inspiration. That's what I think. Yeah. Uh, with that, you know, that's, that's, that's the motivation. Being big, I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's life. That's God, you know me? Yes, yes. Yeah. So, uh, Kunzi, the answer. I admit, that's, that's a nickname. The answer. Yeah. So the answer. Did we mean to read it? Like about be easy. Looking at it now with life, I think so. Mm -hmm. You know, when I started this, you know, I was an amateur. Mm -hmm. um, then people, my friend, actually, you know, um, because I was a very small guy for my division in the mm -hmm. beginning. Yeah. And people always doubted me, you know, and I was an amateur. And uh, every time I would win, like when I got to the EFC, every mm -hmm. time I would win, and my friend said, "Hey." Mm -hmm. You are like Frank Edgar, you know, exactly. there's, a, there's a fighter in the UFC, he's retired now, mm -hmm. who was a champion anyway, his name was Frank Edgar, Frank the Answer Edgar, mm -hmm. and he was small in his division, and he always had, like, he always beat the big guys, and then, mm -hmm. you know, yes. that's where it come from, you know, I answer your questions. <laughs> uh, you, you, you think I'm not, uh, I'm not going to beat you, you think I, I, I'm not going to get where I want? Mm -hmm. Many people thought I would never be here, mm -hmm. where I am right now, Yeah. You know? But right now I'm answering those questions, so wow. that's and I'm answering more with mm. life. So profound. That's very powerful. This is, you know, guys, in interesting, inspirational, coming from um, my brother here, Temba Gorimbo, on the Ola Seven podcast show. So Takana Mina Shubam that I recently, Maka Kumba and Shuba was like, yeah, that's the <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah, that's that one. I just did it. You know, when you're in America, there is um, this. I don't know. Perception where people think that when I say I'm from Zimbabwe, they yes. say, oh, Africa. And like, yes. Because when you say I'm from Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. a lot of them, they straight away say, oh, Africa. Africa, yes. They don't say Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe they're they're they like, say most of them, not all of them. Uh -huh. Most of them, they're most like, oh, them. Africa. Uh -huh. They say, yes. <laughs> then they're like, oh, so you guys, you see like lions, you uh, uh, yes. live with, you know, this. I would like to go to Africa so I can have this experience. Yes, like, yes. So when I saw that, you know, trust me, I was very scared. Um, oh, that day. With, with those lines, yeah, definitely. <laughs> but it didn't show you that. No, no, because they set me down first. And you know, a lion is a lion, my friend. You cannot yeah. play with that stuff. <laughs> so, You're like, okay, what if it's... Just yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm. I was clever, you know. The, the, the producer for, yeah, that, yeah. for that video was good. Wow. He, he put the other guy who had sticks on him okay. on the side. But yeah. at the end of the day, you know, I just wanted to answer the question and say, hey, guys, you know, you always ask me about Africa. Look at me. I'm sitting with my bros, which is the lions. The lions. And soon we are just resting, soon we go hunting. <laughs> you know? And you know what? That can actually make them, the people that see that stuff, mm -hmm. they think, mm, 
You yeah. know, yeah. I want to go to Africa and have this experience exactly. like him, you know. Exactly. Which is also free tourism um uh, advertising, advertising yeah. for Zimbabwe. Yeah. That's what you Barbara did. Barbara yeah. Rosie. Exactly. Answers that. <laughs> free tourism advertising. But you guys from ZT, I think you should work hand in hand with this guy because of course he's putting Zimbabwe on the map. He's putting Zimbabwe on the map like Almost all those guys from America, they're like, okay, you're from Zimbabwe. We want to go to Zimbabwe one day. And yeah, sure, I'm going to I would think it's a shumba zedu gauti. Vagazo, we have a gala to tell Garabaza nation, but I know I'm not I'm not trying to pitch for a thing, you know, but uh, I try to pitch for my country, Very you know. True. I I I I'm from Zimbabwe. Mashingo Bikita Kwam Vod is a rural rural area. Okay. You know, like mm-hmm. I, I said in one of my interviews yes. post fight, you know. You know, for me, I'm from here, mm-hmm. and there's very little, like, um, you know, hope in terms of sports mm. in this country yes. right now. And I'm one of those guys right now that you know that give hope to the people that hey, it can be done. Mm-hmm. You know, despite the challenges that we we face as yes. people as a as a country, you know. Mm-hmm. And for me, I'm not one of those guys that complain about the government, the country, exactly. and all that uh-huh. because you know what I feel. I believe that. Each person has to play a role in life. We mm. cannot just wait for one for one for one institute or so ever to fix the whole world, yeah, you know. Yeah, sure. Because um, yeah, so I play my role, mm-hmm. and I try to advertise my country in the best way possible. You yes. know, the whole world knows Zimbabwe mm-hmm. based on the video with me and the rock exactly. wearing, wearing the shirt with mm. Zimbabwe so on yeah, it. The, even the flag. And yeah, mm-hmm. even the Zimbabwe. That's why I am very upset mm-hmm. that I cannot put my. Which is a very small thing. Many people won't even see it because it's right here. But you know what? I get very upset because you know what? No one is approving my kit. Um, get to talk about that just now. Now, yes. So let's get into it. Um, you were born on January 23, 1991. Yeah, on a Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday. <laughs> what time? I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. It's yeah, in like Bikita Masingo, like you said. No, I was so, born in Masingo, Masingo General Hospital. My General father, my father. Mm-hmm. No, wait, hold up. I was born in Najena. Mm. It's a it's a district in Masingo. Masingo. Because my father used to work there. Oh, yes. Yes, he was working yes. on the hospital. So, mm. so yeah. how was it like, you know, growing up? Uh, no, I didn't grow up in the rural areas, uh, basically. I grew up, um, like, until my mother died, I was in town, Masingo town, you know. Okay. I went to the Quinty Primary School. Okay, Masingo. In, yeah, in Masingo. Uh, until up to grade four. Mm-hmm. Then my father was transferred to Bikita mm-hmm. because, you know, he wanted to go near home and yes. uh, Bikita Hospital. Then we went there, and there was I was at school at a primary school called uh, Ushe, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken. You know, it's been long. Yes. And then I was there probably for a year. Then he was transferred again to Ndanga Hospital. Mm-hmm. Then we went to Ndanga Hospital. That's where I finished my grade seven in mm-hmm. Ndanga Hospital. Yeah. Passed with seven units. Wow. Seven. Seven. Seven is my lucky number since wow. you know. Wow. Wow. So yeah, it's um. It's been a journey. And then after that, after grade seven, then my father was, he beat somebody at work. And then he was fired. And um, <laughs> after that, we went back to the rural areas. So the beating, beating thing is in the blood. blood yeah, my, my, my family is known to be aggressive a little bit in the village, you know. Um, you don't play with the good <laughs> Yeah, 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 definitely. If you go to Nyika, you know, my uncle, the one that you, you all see on the video, mm. he's 92, but people don't play with him. Yeah. When you get in the growth point, yeah. people run away from him. Hey. People that are young, no one, no one plays with him. You know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I think fighting is just in our blood, mm. uh, which is not nice because of the in the community, you know, yes. you are a little yeah. bit feared. But at the end of the day, for me now, it's a means and You're a now way. Now making to money out of fight. So <laughs> you lost your parents at a young age. And um, I, I'm, I'm really sorry about that. Uh, ah, it's ma- been long, bro. Yeah, your There's mother no passed away when you, were, um, when you were nine, according to my research. And your father also passed away uh, four years later. Yeah. So when this all happened, were you aware of the developments? Why didn't we say Reguti Rufuchi then? No, uh, you, when my mother died, well, how, what, how did what happen? Yeah, so she went to a hospital for, I don't know, I can't really remember properly. Mm-hmm. Or, uh, and then I remember my, my father coming back by himself yeah. with a bag of clothes. Uh, and then everyone was crying. Then I was like, what's happening? Then he came there, he held us, me and my brother, my mm-hmm. young brother. Um, then I understand straight away that, you know, maybe my mother is, is not coming back, you mm-hmm. know. Then it's life. Yeah. 
uh i you know as a child you don't you don't when you are nine you don't really register these things very fast true. very true um it didn't register with me you know in my head you know because uh i just was like ah she will come back you know you, when when you think, yeah yeah no yeah. i thought she he left her there and she will come back exactly so i i don't think i cried i can't remember but i don't think i cried mm-hmm. because i just as a child you you think that they, they they're going to come back so yeah. and after you, after they are dead. after a few days then she arrived with a coffin in the coffin mm. then i realized she's in there but she's not you coming know, out hey. you know then a lot of people are crying and all that and uh you know as a child on that scenario personally i would be honest I was uh, it was more of like excitement because my father was a little bit nice to me mm. in that in those moments oh, you yeah, know yeah yeah because my father was always very hard on me he yeah. always used to beat me mm. he always like my father used to beat me with his fist to a point mm. where I'm bleeding at that S- age when I was 8 6 7 8 9 you know Yo. and then when my mother died he was super nice to me in those moments he was mm. taking me to the shops to buy coca cola so it was more of an exciting time for yeah. me to to, to, to like I was feeling more like you know this moment must stay. It was so you were feeling I didn't, the love. Yeah. yeah, because you know my father was very nice to me exactly. when my mother <laughs> the day when my mother died yes. when he arrived there he was yeah, nice I was to me. Trying to comfort you. Yeah. In his head he was uh, comforting me. Yeah. In my head I'm thinking this man is too nice now. <laughs> Let me ride with this wave. So I'll be honest as a person I I, I don't think I felt emotions mm. then when my mother died. Mm. Um on the time of the funeral and then when we went to the rural areas to bury her mm-hmm. it still didn't register because like you know as a child I'm excited to go to the villages and now I'm meeting all my cousins yes. and everybody my, the rich uncles from mm. you know they are coming and exactly. they they're all nice to me wow you no know, you know it's like attention is on me and my brother you know yes. so it felt like kind of like a party type of thing mm. only a few months later then I, I realized that, hey, that woman is not coming back you hey. know then you know i i started thinking to myself mm, you know life is became harder than my father back came back to his true self you mm. know mm. and that monster came back he was starting again to beat me and all mm. that but he was a little bit better after my mother died yes. so yeah it was it was it was what it was you know i i Actually I've never spoken about this. This is my first time to yeah. speak about this mm-hmm. and registering and thinking back. Yes. Actually I felt no emotions when my mother died because mm-hmm. it was a moment where my father was the nicest to me. Yeah. And I was more excited about that than anything else. Mm-hmm. I'll be honest. Wow, that's interesting and um it's quite sad that you know Paul Rose take out kick in when you are now a grown man like you, you know you are now you'd be like okay so probably if she was alive probably she would see you know the work that you're doing right now you know you'll be thinking just to think yeah, okay yeah yeah i'll be happy if I, if my mother was alive i would be so happy mm-hmm. you know i think i think that would be have been a blessing mm-hmm. to have her right yes, now yes. but also when you look at life for me i'm one of those people that are also grateful for everything mm, yeah. the good and the bad you know yes. if she was alive probably i would not be a fighter i would not be here so mm. everything happened for a reason for a reason that's very true yeah, but if she was alive trust me mm-hmm. she would probably be the bowling and <laughs> in town she would have everything i have now. I, i would rather have nothing and she would have everything you wow. know because wow. yeah man that's why when i see guys you know complaining about their parents and mm. all that i'm like my friend life could be worse yeah yeah like life could be worse you know be grateful mm. be grateful that you have parents you know um because you know what if you don't have those people mm-hmm. Yeah, life could be worse. Ah, very true. That's uh you know so profound uh words coming from uh, my brother here Temba Gorimbo here on the All Seven podcast show. We get to know more about our brother. He's doing very well in the US you know um, uh, UFC champion. And uh you always Not yet, but I will be the champion. I'm going to be the champion this year. This year. Yeah, this the year. The champion. I'm going to be the we, UFC champion. You're prophesying. Prophesying. You know, we, the we, next we, time I step in Zimbabwe, I'll be having the UFC belt. Wow. Yeah. Can we can't wait. I'm going to come I'm not going to come back here and do a gather belt. Ooh, nice. Yeah. That's a big challenge. So, you always post videos with your uncle. You know, can you tell us uh, about the relationship uh, that relationship you have um with your uncle? You seem to be always happy and is uh, I mean, he's a very funny person uh, if you look at the videos and what not. So, um, is this where you got your fun from? 
I don't know if I'm funny, but uh, what I, what I would say to you about my uncle, he's always loved me no matter what, from young age, mm-hmm. because you know I was a little bit naughty. Like when I was saying to him, my father beat me, he beat me also for a reason. Yeah, I was very naughty, mm-hmm. you know. But as a child, looking back at it now that I have kids, I'm like, children are meant to be naughty, mm-hmm. so you don't have to kill them like that to yeah. try and show them the way, you know. Yeah, I just look at my daughter, I'm like, hey, then she knows. Mm-hmm. I don't have to beat her. Yeah, you know, I just look at the hey. And I can explain to her, hey, be nice to your mother or mm-hmm. be, you know, no kids, they can do something. Yes, true. Hey, be grateful. Mm-hmm. And I tell her the example that I have of myself, you know. Yes. Uh, so with my uncle, he has been only the guy in the family. People are like, my cousins don't understand why. Mm-hmm. And my cousins, you know, like people don't like my uncle mm. in my village. Why? Uh, because he's a very violent man. Mm. Um, even there when you see in that video. Yeah, yeah. You, as you can see, the people are dancing far from him <laughs> because True. what he said to me, you know, <laughs> I, I went to his house to pick him up. Then I wanted to go with some people. Then they said to me, no, 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 they, they wouldn't want to, him. They don't want him. Then I said, no, if I'm here, I'm here only for a day. I cannot be at his house in here. Exactly. So he has to come here. Then mm-hmm. I said, I'm going to go take him. You guys don't talk to him. S- let him sit there. Mm-hmm. And I went to him and I convinced him to come to the, mm. to my, that's my cousin's his house, yeah. you know. Then I said to him, Sit here on the table. Then he says, yes, I'll sit on the table. Don't let any of these Varoi come near me. You know? hey. He calls everyone in Varoi. You Varoi, Varoi. Varoi. Exactly. So it's like, make sure you go to Varoi. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to So my cousins don't really understand why I like my uncle so much. Exactly. But when they think of it, if they must look at it, when I was growing up, uh, you know, when... Um, my mother that I told you, then when my father died, you know, in the African cultures, uh, you know, in the African families, I was 13 when my father died. My brother was yes. nine. Mm-hmm. Um, for some reason, I think there's a law, because my father had a house in town. Mm-hmm. There's a law that if, um, if the child is 13, he can sign a consent on these parents who have died. Mm-hmm. So, so, um, some years back. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think you can sign on your parents' property oh, or so yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. And I was 13, so one of my cousins, who I to this day feel like she's evil, um, she, she, um, they started calling me names. You know, they call me Mubandiripo, mm. things like that, you know, growing up. So I have been always been an angry child growing up. I've been... Being s- called I've, Mubandiripo, I mean... I, I yeah, but that's, that's only came up, came up when my father died. Oh, Why? Yeah. Because they wanted to make sure that oh. I don't get... They want I don't I don't get a piece of the house yes, or so yes. ever. To this day and I don't now touch. Now like a stepchild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, that 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 cousin of mine, wherever she is, man, I I hate her. I don't hate people, but mm. you know, when I think back of what she did to me at that age, man, I do really hate her. Mm-hmm. Uh, she must never, never come near me. Mm. Yeah, I. You still bitter about that? I don't, I'm not bitter. I just don't. When I think of it, I don't. I don't. I don't feel like people like that should exist. They must die. I, I'm not an evil person. What, what exactly did she do? No, you know when my father died. Uh, my father wanted to see me and my brother before he died, and she came to the village and she took my brother only, and she didn't take me. She left me in the thing. Then when I came back to the house from the school, then she, um, she literally. I mean, I only. I went to the village and I came in and I saw them say, my brother is not there. Then he went to town to see my father. And my father was sick. Then a day later, I hear my father's dead. Mm. And when my father died, then she started acting up. She chased my father. had married another one, another another woman. Yeah. My cousin brother, who's in the car right yes. now. I'm with him now. Yeah. Trying to get him a passport so that I can get him to America. Oh, yeah. Um, she chased his mother straight away. And then straight after that, she started calling me names. Uh, including some of my family members, some of my cousins. Who now, some of them, I forgive them because mm. sometimes they called that out of greed. But oh, she yeah. showed me the true side of a person mm. that she is. Mm-hmm. I don't think a person like that changes. They can only enlarge and, you know, become yeah. become a bigger. Mm. Uh, I don't know, man. It is what it is. But uh, long story short, you know, when the people started calling me that stuff, you know, to this day I question if I'm really part of the family. Mm. Yeah, I'm 33 now, but I still question if I'm part of the family. You know. Looking at my life now and everybody else in the family's life, I'm very different to everybody. Yes, yes. So sometimes I'm like, maybe really, I'm not part of the family. That's why I don't build in my village. Mm. It's not because I can't build in my village. I can, but 
um, I just maybe have those questions in my head to yeah. this day, you know. Yeah. I wish my mother is alive. She can tell me really um, if it's really true, you know. Um, that's also one of my driving factors because mm. you know what? I grew up uh, with, uh, with a lot of anger. Yeah. With a lot of anger. Mm -hmm. In my family, probably I'm the first one to pass my high school like mm. the way I did. Yeah. Very good. Um, you know, just natural, natural intelligence in terms of like, I never even had time to study. Mm -hmm. uh, I just went to school and write tests mm. and passed, you know. Wow. Um, wow. Um, yeah. And everybody else, I don't know, to this day, except this cousin of mine, my yeah. cousin brother, mm -hmm. he now like, he beat me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's he's gone he's, above. Yeah. That's why, you know, I'm 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 very grateful that you know I'm in this position. Maybe I can get him to America oh, to well study done. to well study done. to be a pilot or whatsoever, you know. Mm, God bless wow. him. I hope he, he rises all the way yes. and he can change something in someone's life. Someone's life, very true. Yeah, but like what like I was telling you, yeah. Mm. I grew up with a lot of anger and um so and you also, you know, uh, ventured into illicit uh, you know mining activities back then. Um, what made you decide, you know, to do that? Oh, it was 2008. Yeah. Uh, you remember the president who was there before that was Robert Mugabe didn't pay the teachers. Uh -huh. And I was in Form 5. And my cousin had promised to me that after I passed my high school, my, my O-level, I would go to a boarding school. Mm -hmm. Then that promise was not fulfilled. Then he said to me, I must go back to the same high school that I was. I went there for maybe three, four days. Mm. I just said to myself, I don't want to be here. I'm going to the diamonds. I never <laughs> told anybody I went yes. to the diamonds. I left the school. Mm -hmm. You know, I I was just like, also like there was no like clear path of where I want to be in mm. life. Because yes, I passed my high school, but I never intended to work ever. I was not yes. thinking. When the teachers would ask me, what do you want to do when you grow up? When I was still young, because my father said, you must be a pilot. Mm. I would say, I want to be a pilot, but yeah. it was not something in my heart. Mm -hmm. And then when I was in high school, when I finished my, um, when I when I passed the thing, I didn't even know what what to do after. Mm, like after, what, after what, school. Yeah, what must I do? Mm. But one thing I knew, one day, you know, there was a song called uh, by Akon. It was uh, I used to keep faith and believe that one day I'll be a star. Yeah, I'm seeing that now. I always liked that song, and look at me now, you know. Um, You're now a star. Yeah, I don't really. It's it is it is life. I am where I am. I don't think I am a star, but. I always like that song and look at yes. me where I am right now. Mm -hmm. So um, I decided to quit school. I said, no, I don't want to be here in school. Mm -hmm. I want to go to the Diamonds. And I was very lucky. I'm one of the luckiest people where the Diamond fields, you, you know. You got the Diamonds? Yeah, I used to wow. I used to get a lot of Diamonds. Even uh -huh. the buyers used to like me. They used to call me Mafana. Oh. Yeah, on the Diamonds, <laughs> on the Diamond fields, um, like I was very young. Mm -hmm. I was 16. Yeah. Um, the buyers, the people that used to buy, they used to like me a lot because yeah. I would always bring them nice things, uh -huh. nice diamonds in terms of diamonds. So yes. they loved me. The buyers loved me. Then the mafia loved me because, you know, I, it's not nice, but one of my cousin's sisters was dating one of the mafia guys there. So <laughs> they would say, you know, yeah, yeah, they loved me for that. And the other wages, some were jealous, some were loving me, you yeah. know. Yeah. It is what it is, but... Um, at the Diamond Fields, I was probably one of the luckiest guys, you know. Mm. And also, I don't know, bro, um, I'll be honest with you. Every time I've ever gotten a Diamond when I was at Diamond Field, mm. it was not something I worked hard for. Um, I would just, like, you sleep on the fire guard. While we're sleeping, then I would just wake up in the middle of the night and I said to my cousin, who was my syndicate, mm -hmm. was, my syndicate was only two people. Yeah. The only time I was on a syndicate of, like, seven people yes. is the first day I arrived there. Mm. And I was forced to be with these people that were yes. so unlucky and that had these on their own bad uh, vibes, you know. Yeah. Because I was new mm. and everybody, you know, then we didn't catch any diamond then. Yes. And went back home empty handed. Uh, we only got in Goda, you know, um, the rough ones yes. don't sell oh, much. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Then I decided, no, I want to do a syndicate of two, me and my cousin. And we were young, so people didn't really want to ask that because <laughs> I was not very good yeah. at digging, uh, very good, oh, you know. Yes. But I was very likable. Mm. Buyers loved me. They called me Mafana there yeah, on the yeah. Diamonds. And um, the other guages liked me, and the policemen loved me. Yes. So if you wanted to have a way, you have to be with me. And mm. I always had my cousin. So like most of the time when I got the biggest diamonds and the like the day I got the twelve carat diamond I still remember I was sleeping on the fire. Oh, 12 yeah I got a twelve carat diamond. So 
I was sleeping on the fire guard. Then I just said to, I woke up in the middle of the night mm -hmm. and they were busy shooting and shooting guns, you know, mm -hmm. to scare people. And it was looked like no one should get into the diamond fields mm -hmm. at that time. I woke up and I said to my cousin, Lord, let's go. And he says to me, why? I said, let's go now inside here. We're going to get something. It was um, like a dream. I dreamt having something. Then I just yes. woke up and said, hey, let's go inside here. Mm. And um, we went in there. Literally, we didn't go deep. I just said this, switched on the candle. Mm -hmm. The diamond was right in front of me. I took it, put it in my mouth, and I said, let's go. Then he says to me, no, no, we have not taken it. I said, no, <laughs> let's go. Then we, we left. Then, um, yeah, then he realized, oh, we had a big diamond. So. Exactly, and lucky you. Yeah, you yeah are, man, you I, I feel man. like, you know, um, that's why I'm scared of myself sometimes mm. because I see things before they happen. Oh. Yeah. You see, are you like a prophet? No. I just say I'm blessed and I'm gifted. It's, it's a gift. You see I believe things so. before they happen. Before I was in the UFC, mm. three days before I was in the UFC, someone was screaming at me mm. in my dream and saying, hey, it's on the 15th, damn it. Oh. Three days later, my manager called me and said, the UFC is signing you. Oh. Yeah. On the 15th, on the 15th on of August. Exact date. On the exact date. Someone, uh, three days before that, someone was screaming at me in my mm, dream. And I mm. woke up, I'm like, what's happening on the exactly. 16th? That day on the 16th, I woke up with three missed calls from my manager. And I called him back, then he says to me, um, the UFC is signing you. Oh. So that's why when I say what I say, I know what I'm saying. Exactly. That's very powerful. So in your interview uh, with the Guardian, uh, the Guardian um, you said, and I caught uh, I got caught and beaten by the dogs when I was underground I was, uh, and I was very skinny. So the dogs pulled me out. They were big and vicious and I lost a lot of blood. Yeah. Close God. So, I mean, can you tell us more about this uh, unfortunate incident in September? It was not of unfortunate. It was the best incident. <laughs> I always look at things in the, uh, in the best perspective. You know, like you have to look at things and be like, wow, okay, cool. That was good. Because I was becoming too complacent on the diamond fields. Like I told you, I was a very lucky guy on the diamond fields. So I thought I'd run the show. Mm -hmm. And we so happened to head this policeman. And we went into the diamond field with the policeman. And, you know, um, he stood up there. And we were busy down. And we were not even paying attention what could happen. Mm. Too comfortable. Yes. yes. And um, we got caught. Mm. Uh, his bosses came. And then he ran away. Mm -hmm. And then we got caught. And I got beaten by the dogs, and I, I almost died. Um, I, yeah, that's the day I saw white in front of me. Do, do, you, like, do, you, do you still have the, the, the scars? Yeah, the you see my whole body. There's scars everywhere, bro. Oh. Like, you look at it, everything, man. You can see the dog marks. Yeah, the one that, that took long to heal was this one. Yeah. I'm trying to take my, my, you know those dogs are very... Exactly. Like, exactly. those dogs are trained. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so nowhere to catch. The first dog bite that I had was here. This one picked me up from here, right? This, this, but yeah, man, um, it is what it is, you yeah. know. It happened. I saw that's the say that that day I almost, yeah, I almost died. I remember seeing hmm. white in front of me, hey. like white, like white, just white. <sighs> yeah, I saw, I saw <laughs> white. I was so white and I passed out. I remember this. Hey. I woke up the following day. Someone, you know, they were operation in Murambasina, no exactly. more, the yeah, you know, and um. I actually woke up the following day, like, you know, people woke me up and I'm like, oh, yes, I'm close for you, you know. Yes. And, um, and yeah, I just walked. Did you go, then the go back to Gukumakomba after that incident? No ways. There was no one there. It was Operation Murambasina. Hey. Uh, there was no one there. Even the police that, w when I was walking, because when you get beaten by the dogs, mm. they don't attack you again, you oh, know. Yeah. They say, go home, the police. Exactly. The police were feeling sorry for me when I was walking to find my way to the place of the buses, you know, hey. and... Uh, what a better life to have. A week later, I was back there digging again. <laughs> yeah. A week later, you know, he's a fighter. So you never stop. He don't quit easily, you know. So moving on, in, this, uh, in, the, in the early um, 2000s, uh, you moved to South Africa. Yeah. Uh, did you have a passport then? How did you get to <laughs> South Africa, my brother? Okay. Uh, so 2008, right, I was doing the diamonds. So um, then they had... The last operation they had, that was Operation Akudzokwi. Mm. And uh, that one, they brought helicopters. <laughs> yeah, that's when I remember we walked from Chiazwa all the way to past Bechnaf Bridge. Uh -huh. My friend, yeah, that one. <laughs> they, they, they had us because, you know, you'd run 
as soon as you think ah the soldiers that were chasing me yeah are out of sight yes. you are you are you are tired as you feel like you want to take a breath yes another red barretta <laughs> and Eish. you know you know when you are running you run <laughs> <laughs> if anyone went to the diamond field, they would tell you this. Yeah, yeah. The last operation they had, Operation Agudzogui, Kumunda Agudzogui. Yeah. It was hectic because they had helicopters. Helicopters. And they had soldiers placed in places where you would run. As soon as you are feeling you are fresh, you are you, you are running away from these ones. Then the, the, <laughs> next, the next group attack. starts with you. Then they are with you for like two kilometers. <laughs> then the next, bro, I promise you, I'm... I remember that day <laughs> it was not nice and there was no anyone there was no transport and remember they just surprised us yeah, yeah. there was no transport mm-hmm. <laughs> so you walk and you can't walk on the on the road you have to walk in the bush cuz there's road blocks yeah. there's oh my god hey. it was it was it was hard we yeah. walked for long i think 40 kilometers or so ooh that's too much that's 40 kilometers on the road yeah. because you get to nyanyazi yes. then you walk to past, to Bechnav and past Bechnav oh, to a place where you can get that's too much yeah oh, that's too much yes because you walk from Mukumunda ne? yes yes then after from that Mukumunda is very far you walk like three four hours to go to Munda from hey ah oh, oh, no no was that much. was not nice trust me my friend <laughs> so you spend your first week in jail you know as a refugee you know Urimum not Jebu. refugee I was deported you're deported yeah no I had some money so I was trying to lead you to the story mm-hmm. so after that operation I had some money left then my cousin came for Christmas Christmas and I said to him I'm not going to stay here then he wanted me to go back to school I said I'm not going back to school mm. I cannot go back to school in an arrogant way I said to him I used to make more money than the teachers why must I go back to mm. school what did Master look up at uh, these guys? I want to go to South Africa. Then mm. he says, what are you going to do? Because I was small, skinny. Yes. Um, and, you know, I was not probably the hardest working guy in yeah. terms of labor. Mm-hmm. Then he knew that in South Africa it's labor. You know, you're working in the garden. So I said to him, hey, I'm going to South Africa. I've got this money of mine. I'm going when you go back. Then mm. he said, okay, cool. He took a chance. And he had passport and visa and everything. Yeah. And bless my cousin, you know. Um, he, he, he decided to... He decided to to go through the bush with us me my cousin and my cousin's sister and my cousin's wife mm-hmm. went through the bush and you know uh, everybody hundreds of people yes. and then they were like combis fetching us once we are on the messina side mm-hmm. and we just going to Pe- uh, petersburg Pol- uh, yeah. polokwane yeah. we got deported there we got arrested there our combi was caught and we were all taken to the police station mm-hmm. police custody and we got arrested and I was in jail for a week mm-hmm. Um, then we were deported uh, back to Zimbabwe after that. Uh, but, you know, with my hard head, you know, I still had a little bit of money. Went back again. The same day. I, <laughs> I, was, I remember I got to Bed Bridge. You know, but it was embarrassing. You know how the it same is. Day. You know how it is. Like, you already say to people you're going to South Africa. Yeah. And then now it's also pride on the line. Yeah. Now you get deported. I said no. I'm not going to do that. I'm going back to South Africa, you know. My cousin calls me, like, go back, go back, because he, eventually the police took some bribe from him, then they said yes. to him, you can continue with your journey, because yes. he said, I was just helping these guys, mm-hmm. and they said, continue with the journey, and then he was saying, no, go back. I said, no, I'm not going back. I literally, I was deported four o'clock at Bedbridge, mm-hmm. and uh, by seven o'clock, I was back in South Africa again. <laughs> and the second time I succeeded, but oh. at an expense of, you know, I was... Never, he- never silent. Yeah, I was the second time I succeeded mm. to get to South Africa, but yes. at an expense, mm-hmm. which was being held hostage in um, in Hillbro with the by, boys by Magumag. Uh, no, not ah, Magumag. Magum. No, no, not Magumag. Magum. By Malaycha. 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 Because my cousins were not paying the money. You ah. know? The money that I, that I promised yes, they them. Say I, they, you did the pay forward. Yeah, pay forward. Oh. No, I had I had small money. Yes. but they wanted more. Ay. So I said, no, don't worry, take me there. My cousins will pay. Oh, come. Then my cousin didn't want to pay, so they held me like for two weeks. Hey. And to an ex, to a point where they said, "Hey, when fun I wake up, Maria is going to spend it up and up and never do bad again. It will bad. It's a bad again. I'm a jago guy. I I try it. So we must take you to to to, pa, to Park Station. No, we're gonna take you to Park Station. You must get arrested. Oh. And they drove me at Park Station. I ran like hell. Um, <laughs> and I was not. I lived on the streets there at that church, Methodist Church. Um, yeah. Then you went to Cape Town. Yeah, then eventually, you know, like when I look at my life, it's a movie, bro. Mm. I can't even go into detail with everything, you know, because yeah. I lived on the streets on the hill, bro, mm-hmm. uh, thing. And then 
one of um one of the guys that was in from my village was coming through from Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. It was around January. Yeah. So everyone is going back there. My cousin sent him money mm. so that he can get on the train with me yes. to go to South yes. Africa. South Africa yeah. And the guy the guy withdrew the money and then he told me they were bank charges. You withdrew my money, mm. his money, and he said there were bank charges and then I cannot take you with on this on this train. There is only two hundred for you. Mm -hmm. Then you know, he, he, he was, he was, um, he was not nice, but you know what does, what life does eventually something happened recently to him. And one of the first people to reach out to him, I don't say that I want people to have this. If you do something to me bad, mm -hmm. something must happen to you. You know, even the, my worst enemy who is that cousin of mine. I don't wish her like that, yeah, yeah. but it's like, um, something happened. Like she, he, he, something happened to him. Then I was one of the first people to help him. And just tells you, and people ask me, "Hey, why are you help with this guy? You remember exactly. this guy did this exactly. to you? He left you in Park Station without." And I said, "No, it doesn't matter. It's life." Um, but that's that's how life works. Yeah. So I went, I went to, I went to Cape Town. To Cape Town, you know, and uh, I, I was a gardener, working at eighty rand per day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my first boss was Cornell Langrange, and yeah. I, I I I was I was a hard worker, you know, and um, you know I was the guy that picked the grass. I was the guy. I was not allowed to use the lawn mower because there was this Malawian guy that was using the lawn mower. Yeah. So he was feeling threatened if oh. I touch the lawn mower. Say yo. Yes. Take my job. Yes. So I was the guy <laughs> only kureka uh, negudi negudi. Exactly. And then my cousin who got me the job, he was working. He used the so you know the weed eater. Yeah. He used to call that machine machine we marry. Yeah. I'll bat machine we marry. <laughs> so I got a tombo to tombo to bat machine we marry. So yes, yes. I was not allowed to touch the lawn mower mm -hmm. and the weed eater. Yes. Because it's for the seniors. Yeah. And yeah. if the boss sees that you are good at this, now you are taking their place. So <laughs> and the boss liked me. Yeah. Yeah, but it was life, man. It was a blessing, and uh, I'm 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 really grateful of the path I've taken in this life. You That's know. really great. You know, your professional career, uh, Temba, uh, in MMA. You know, started in 2010, uh, but before that, you had been involved in um, a, a number of matches, you know. Uh, what motivated you uh, to become an um, MMA fighter? <coughs> Me? Um, so, uh, like I told you, we fight a lot in my family before. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I watched a movie called Never Back Down. Mm -hmm. And I always say to people, I watched the movie Never Back Down and I Never Back Down. Yes. When I watched the movie, I realized, oh, this is a sport. Then I joined, a, I was actually in the back of the Bucky uh, coming from work and I saw a poster about a gym. Then I took the number, called them. Then I, the following day I was there mm -hmm. training, you know, and they told me I was good. Uh, I was talented. And then um, three months later, I had my first fight, won mm -hmm. the fight very quickly. Wow. Uh, seven seconds knockout. Mm -hmm. um, I can't really remember much, but you know, that's why I say seven, like seven is my lucky number. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I I I I I won it very quickly, and uh, and from then it was up and down the amateur career. You know, it was yes. amateur career up and down, up and down. But one thing, my coach, I had a very terrible amateur record. You know, mm. my amateur record was eight wins, seven losses. Wow! It looked like I would never be here. Yeah. There were guys that I was training with that were twenty five. I remember, uh, I think it was Zimbabwe too. Mm -hmm. Regis Muyambo. Uh, he, I'm not speaking bad of him. He's, yeah. he's a great kid, but I just want to give him an example. Yeah. He was 25 wins, one loss as an amateur. He was a superstar as an Yay. amateur. And my coach always told me this, Temba, don't worry about this amateur record. I'm giving you tough fights. Mm -hmm. This is what he said to me. I'm giving, I fought the toughest guys in the, mm -hmm. the, in the organization, in, yeah. in, the, in the province of Cape Town, you know. Mm -hmm. He says, I'm giving you tough fights for a reason. I said, why? And he says, you will see one day mm -hmm. why I'm giving you this tough fight so you can be something. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about you losing now. You know, I would cry, but he said, don't worry about you losing now. You know, mm -hmm. you will be something one day. Then, honestly, that man, uh, Anthony Keto, to this day, those words still mm -hmm. ring bells in my head. You know, yeah. even on my last UFC fight, uh, I mean, yeah, like, I would like to have him there. Yeah. You know, because he has helped me in a great way. To be where you are today. Uh, yeah, in terms of, like, those words still ring bells mm -hmm. to me, you know. I feel like he had an eye for something or he, something was speaking with on his behalf. Yes, yes. Uh, because when you look at where I am right now, yeah, I really feel that, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So still on the MMA 
which match can you say, you know, uh, given a chance to do a rematch, mm. you would still want to, you know, <laughs> who did you fight there and what was the, uh, the result then? You know, people see my, I've got four losses, right, on my record. I believe I only have the one, one loss on my record. One loss? Yeah, and it was the best loss of my career. Mm. The first UFC fight that I lost. Yeah. That is my, my best loss of my career, and it was the best thing to ever happen mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. The other loss is, it's not an excuse, but I know who I am. Mm -hmm. um, I know the other loss, I was sick. And I was stupid, and all I wanted to do was to prove a point that I'm tough. Yeah. And unfortunately, you can be tough mentally, but the body, that if you are sick, you are sick. I was, sick. I was dehydrated. I was having gastro vomiting. And mm. like literally the night before the fight, I shed in my blankets. Wow. Sorry to swear. I don't know if it's swearing. Yeah. But I shed in my blankets. Mm. Literally, when they were, luckily I had my own room because I was the main event. Yeah. I had my own room. When I woke up, I folded all the... Blankets, the everything. blankets, mm -hmm. so that my teammates, when they come in, they don't they see, see that. They don't see them. You know, I don't want my fight to be cancelled. Mm. And when we went for breakfast, I was vomiting there, and you know, um, I was very sick. You know, I weighed in seventy three kgs for the fight because it was catch weight. Mm. By the time I was fighting, because you're supposed to rehydrate and get to like eighty kgs after yes, that, yes. instead of going up, I went down. I was sixty nine kgs oh. by the by the time I, I was very dehydrated. You know. Uh, and if you see the guy, he knocked me out. You know, but it's good because mm. you know what happened. Yeah. It gave a lot of people that I fought after that confidence that ah, if we touch him with a punch, he goes down. But mm. they don't know; they didn't know exactly that I was sick. Exactly, you know. So it it was also good. Mm. Uh, you know, I was dehydrated, and then the other loss was to Leon Maynard, my first loss. Yeah, I think that loss was, I mean, self inflicted in terms of like the environment I was in. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I had a coach that you, he was he's one of the best coaches. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong, but. Yeah. You know, leading up to that fight, the coach was telling me, Temba, even if you lose to Leon, it's okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I'll be like, this is my coach. And he's telling, he's telling me, me, even if I lose to this guy, it's okay. And I'm going to a fight. Yeah. And then I had teammates. Uh, like, it's, things are very weird in yes. South Africa yes. sometimes. You yeah. know, I had teammates. I don't know. It was just weird. Like, the promoter once came to me. He's like, Temba, your teammate is asking me for your opponent's number. I don't know. I don't know why is he doing this. I don't mm. know if the promoter was playing mind games with me. Oh, something. And then he showed me the message. Then I realized, oh, one of my teammates is like, you know, and uh, when we were in the fight, just, I don't know, it was just weird. Mm -hmm. So, um, also, under, uh, it was not a division that I wanted to fight in. Yeah. I, wa I was forced, like the coach, because in the gym where I was, that's why I ended up opening my own gym because I wanted my own freedom. Mm, yeah. In the gym where I was, I was forced to do things that I don't want to. Mm -hmm. They would tell me, um, you need to fight a lightweight. I'm a waterweight. Mm -hmm. And to fight a lightweight, you I'm not training properly, you know. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to diss the coach. I'm just yeah. trying to speak the reality <laughs> of the things, you know. And, I understand. And yeah, I went and lost that fight, but it was just because of the environment. And also mm -hmm. I lost, uh, it was not my division. Yeah. I, I I shouldn't have fought. In, I shouldn't that have. Division. Not, yeah, I like, I, I like, I'm a big guy. Yeah. I'm not the biggest in my division, but yeah, I'm but a big I'm guy. big guy not to be in that division mm. that I was fighting, you know. And yeah. then the other yeah. loss, which was in Abu Dhabi, mm -hmm. I lost it because, yes, I lost it. Great, but I dislocated my shoulder 28 seconds into the fight. Mm. The guy couldn't even finish me. We won three rounds. He yeah. won on points. Mm. And I only got to fix my shoulder. My shoulder was popped back in into my so into the socket. Mm -hmm. At like 2 a.m. after the fight because I, w I, I stayed in to corner one of the guys I was training with um, with a dislocated shoulder, with oh. one arm like this. Oh. Yeah, after the fight, after I lost, you know. So I believe that if I was healthy, I would have beat that guy because if you can't finish me with one hand, come on, bro, you are... I mean, <laughs> with one hand. Yeah, so <laughs> it is what it is. I've also won fights with one hand. One hand as well. Yeah, yeah, with a dislocated shoulder. So I've always... Had I have had these problems, so I have two operations, one on this shoulder, one on this shoulder. Mm -hmm. So now my shoulders are healthy, but you know. You're not, you're not good. I'm good, yeah, I'm blessed. Oh, great. So you moved to the Extreme Fighting Championship, uh, you know, uh, EFC, mm -hmm. uh, and you have um, uh, 10 fights. Uh, maybe before we move on to, the, uh, to my next question, can you tell us uh, the difference between MMA and EFC? No, 
MMA is the pro- is the, is the sport. EFC is the organization. UFC is an organization. Oh, okay. So it's like you're playing soccer. If you're playing soccer, Premier League. Premier League. Champions I mean, if you're playing in South Africa, it's like you're playing in in uh, PSL, right? Okay, in South yes. Africa. Yeah. Then the cream de la cream and de la of force of the MMA is like you're playing for EPL. Man, Man City. Yeah. So when you are in the UFC, it's like you're playing for Man City. Oh yes. Basically in okay. MMA. So um, yeah, I moved to EFC, became a champion there. Um, wow. First Zimbabwean champion. First, I actually was the first Zimbabwean to fight for the title, mm. and I lost. Then I came back again. Then I won. Um, you know, and what's funny is like it's just history follows me because after I lost that, I thought, oh damn, <laughs> I'm not gonna become the first Zimbabwean. Yes, then yes. there was another guy, Elvis Moyo. He fought for the title. He was beating the guy. He was beating the guy for five rounds. Wow. He was winning and head of. Yeah. And then you know yeah. what happens? Uh-huh. He got finished in the last round. <laughs> it was just, it was coming in full circle to just for, to come back to me and say, make the history. You, you. Then there was another guy, Sylvester. Mm-hmm. He went there and fought. He was beating the guy. Mm. And then for some reason, something happened and he lost. Wow. And then I came back and they gave me the toughest guy from Brazil. Mm-hmm. They said I was gonna lose. I beat him. Yeah. And then they gave me another guy. They thought I was, the guy I bought. I fought for the title. Then they thought I was gonna lose, and I beat him. I finished him in the first round. Mm. And then they give me another guy to defend my title. You know, like things are very weird yeah. in South Africa. Yeah. You know, um, if you are like me, a person that is very vocal, mm-hmm. I'm very vocal. Yeah. Hey, like you can tell, I talk a lot. Yes. Um, and I talk my mind. You know. Yeah. Sometimes it gets me in trouble. Sometimes it doesn't. So <laughs> I'm not the guy that the people in that circle mm-hmm. liked, you know. I don't want to say colors and stuff like that, but, you know, I'm the guy that the black guys don't like because you know why? Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm representing something they're scared to do, oh, to, to be. To be, you yes, know? yes. In, in the, when we were in South Africa, I was the guy that, I'm the black guy that is being something that yeah. they're scared to be. Oh. And then the other, the white guys, they didn't like me because, you know, I'm the vocal black guy that tells them to sit down when yes. I... Because I never take anything from anybody. So I, I was that guy in that promotion, you mm. know, and they didn't like me in that promotion for that because they, they like step on, the, on, on guys like myself, yes. you know. Yeah. They want to step on guys like myself. Mm-hmm. They have their fa- favorites, but they want to step on guys like myself, you know. Yeah. They don't want you to do well. Um, or if you do well, you must be, you know, yes, yeah. yes boss. Exactly. I was not ever the guy that says, yes, boss. Mm. Yes, boss. Tomorrow, boss. No, I say no. And I was fortunate enough to have other guys also, mm-hmm. you know, that helped me and said to me, hey, Temba, you know, you can't sign this contract because this contract is like signing your life. Mm-hmm. So the promoter never liked me. That promoter never liked me. To this day, he does not like me. Yes. Why? Because I stood my ground. Mm-hmm. I had people that you were advising that. me. You know, mm-hmm. I had clever white guys too yeah. advising me and telling me, hey, Temba, don't sign this, don't sign that, you know. Even to the point, to the day I, I got out of the promotion, uh, I was very privileged to get out of the promotion because you know what happened when I became a champion. In that promotion, when you become a champion, mm-hmm. the contract automatically renews itself oh, okay. and you are tied to it again forever. And what happened is God came through, man. They had an employee and they had a mistake with this employee whatsoever, misplaced my contract. Mm. And I fought, then they were trying to force me to sign the contract the day before the fight. I said to yeah. them, I'm, I'm going to pull out of the fight mm-hmm. or go home. You want me to fight or you want me to sign the contract? I'm not going to sign a contract. They wanted me to sign a contract. They, that promotion wanted to me to sign a contract today and I'm fighting tomorrow. Tomorrow. Does it make sense? It does not make sense yeah, because you know yeah. what? I'm not in the right mind frame for me to sign a contract now. Mm. It needs lawyers. I'm not exactly, a lawyer. Exactly. But they are smart, you know. They are used to that. So I never stood for that. Mm. So they never liked me. So I came there, answered everything and became the champion. God bless me. Look at me now, you know. Wow. And Yeah. It is what it is. <laughs> but I'm now, I'll be honest, I'm yeah. now in a promotion that wants me to do well. Mm. The UFC loves me. Exactly. Are we Why? Because tell? I'm yeah. authentically myself. Mm-hmm. They've already invested a lot of money in me. Yeah. yeah the UFC sure. loves me mm-hmm. and the UFC wants me to do well. well. Everybody that works at the UFC, mm-hmm. they want me to do well. Wow. And you know when you're in a promotion like that, you can only go up. up. A person like me can yeah. only go up. Not I cannot even complain of one thing. Mm. Like everything. Like... I'm not even in fight camp. Like um, when I got there in August, I'm not even in fight camp. Mm. Don't quote me because the other UFC fighters might not like this, but mm-hmm. they're sending me meals to make sure that, I, like meals, meals you only get when you're in fight camp. Yes. They're sending me meals to make sure I'm eating well. They're calling me to make sure, you know, like 
it's like I'm an investment that they want to do well so mm. well because you know what I have also a great story yeah. um they shot a documentary already I'm only two three five deep in the UFC yeah, yeah. but they've already shot a documentary on me mm. you know and they've uh, already invested you know uh I think yeah it's gonna come together but you know I believe my story is gonna be bigger than Rocky Balboa movie mm-hmm. the Hollywood too wow yeah I believe you know um That's big, uh, Temba. So I wanted to, to, I mean, uh, you take us through uh, the journey to the uh, second bout. You know, how was it? And after winning uh, the match, what did it mean for you? In the UFC? Yeah. Oh, it was, uh, it was a blessing. Um, mm-hmm. Winning is always fun. I love winning. Mm-hmm. You know, I love winning. I work hard because I love winning. I fight because it's the only sport I'm good at and, mm-hmm. and it's the only sport I win. Yeah. So I love winning and uh, when I won that fight it was a blessing because you know what I was in a very tough situation you know in the UFC however when you get in there you lose a fight and they had high expectations on you yeah um and you show up again and you lose again <sighs> if you are lucky they'll give you the second third chance but <laughs> um they will, I mean they will, they will fire you they will not fire you they'll cut you from the roster oh hey. yeah you will be cut from the roster you yeah. know because unfortunately There's many people that need that opportunity. opportunity as well. yeah, so if you're not performing, you're out. You, know? out. you have to be a marketable guy too, yeah. like yeah. with the UFC. Yeah. Yeah. With me, they saw the potential. Mm-hmm. Thanks to Sean Shabby, he saw yeah. me and he signed me at an after party. Great, mm-hmm. and it's a blessing. And you know, um, with me, they saw a potential of a guy that mm-hmm. can be marketed, is marketable mm-hmm. um, in a different way without having to see whatsoever like where I was before. Mm-hmm. Now I'm in a place where I'm valued. Yeah. And um this 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 like big growth to come. So during that second win you fought uh, under the South African flag and uh, I understand you know there were some issues uh, that the sports and recreation Commi- uh, commission later cleared the air saying and I caught they said um the sports and recreation commission uh, SRC takes not of the recent post by Mr. Gorimbo, the UFC world, um, welterweight champion who alleged uh, that the Zimbabwe sports minister refused to allow him to wear the Zimbabwe national colors for a, a match held on Saturday, May 20, 2023. The approval to wear national colors requires an athlete um, or a national sporting association to undergo an assessment based on a national uh, colors policy framework with the specific you know uh, protocols and procedure so the statement continues and it says therefore or the, there are no excuse there are no exceptions the SRC has established that Mr Gorimbo is not registered with the Zimbabwe Mixed Martial Arts Association the association could have facilitated the process on his behalf and he had uh, On, on his behalf, had he been so registered uh, with it, close court. What was happening there, Mr. Gorimbo, if you remember? I was trying to find it. Um, so, my brother. Firstly, it's not the second fight. It's the first fight. I used Cameroon mm-hmm. on my f- on a f- Cameroon flag. It's not a big thing, but it's a big thing. You know, it's not really a big thing to everybody else. You know, I see like some Zimbabwean, they're like, oh, it's not a big thing, it's not a big deal. Of course, to you, it's not. But mm-hmm. I worked my ass off to be here in the mm-hmm. UFC. Mm-hmm. I have everybody else putting their flag on the kit. Can you imagine, like I told you, the UFC can catch you any minute mm-hmm. if you don't perform, right? Yeah. God forbid, I'm here to stay, you know? Yeah. Uh, imagine you get cut in before you even put your own flag on the thing, my friend. And you are the one, the first Zimbabwean to... Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it, it really does hurt. Yeah. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. So it was the first fight. I didn't know. When I arrived there for the first fight, they told me, Temba, uh, unfortunately, Zimbabwe is one of the new countries in the UFC. Mm-hmm. Um, we only have Blood Diamond. Now it's you. Uh, we have not had the, the opportunity to have an approval yet from your country to use the, to, for us to stamp a flag here. Flag, yeah. So it's not a normal designed flag. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a design. So it needs to be approved. Yeah. People say no. But the UFC is a company. It's an entity where um, they can be sued for these things. Oh, yeah. For millions. So they don't do things without approval. So they need approval for this design because the country can say, wait, why are you, why are you designing our 
flag like i yes. mean you know it's a patch with a country here you know they need even what even if it looks exactly like the flag yeah it still needs an approval, approval yeah and they said we we couldn't get this done and i said okay um there's nothing i can do i can do yeah sure um because i'm here to fight the first fight i fought but then did you resolve the issue with the src when, I'm gonna, let me let me get it to it okay then the second fight I got there, then I thought, they said, no, they promised me, the UFC guys promised me that by the time I fight the next fight, it will sure they will have approved. Mm -hmm. Then I got there, fight week, then they told me, Temba, we don't know how to tell you, but your guys are a little bit difficult uh, to deal with because and I said, why? And I said, like, they've not approved your kit, sorry. You have to choose another flag this mm -hmm. time again. I said, why? Did you not contact the embassy? He says, we contacted the embassy and the embassy said, you must go to the sports ministry. They gave out contacts to the sports ministry. Mm. And the sports ministry said this. Um, and it's, for me, like, you know, you know what's, what hurts me? It's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. It's an email. Yeah. All they need is an email to say, yes, we approve. Mm -hmm. Simple. I don't know Nongwa. You know what is Nongwa? Like yeah. those people that have those, um, yeah. those old people that have got this. Tum even if, even no, even if it's like very simple, it's like this water is colorless. Yeah. They want to be like, mm, yeah, mm. like, come on, just send an email saying, yes, please. Mm. Yes. All they need is, yes, by Zimbabwean. Yes, you can represent our country. Yes, yes you can put that. And they, they didn't do that. And I reached out, you know, um, because before when I came here for the sports awards, when I won the Zimbabwe sports awards, I had. So the, for those that were asking, oh, has he got proof that if you need to conduct Casey Coventry, you need to conduct with, with uh, a husband. Yes, you do. That's what I had to do when I was coming for the sports awards. You have to go through. I don't. I even forgot the name of the husband. I deleted the number because what does the guy have to do with me? He has to change the diapers for the child. I, I personally don't approve that, you know. Um, it sounds personal, but it is personal mm -hmm. with me and her. And not everybody at SRC. And there's someone else who wrote that letter and put my, it was Gerard Molocho or whatever. Mm -hmm. He wrote my name and put my name there and put my email on the email, yeah. on, on, on public. Yeah. You know, you can get sued for that. Yeah. If I want to. You can get sued for that oh, stuff. You attached your you, email. You attached my real email, my real number. Yeah. I had to change my number. Yes. You know, it's not fair. It's not cool. You know, you can be in authority, but you know what? You are in authority in one department. I, I wanted to go straight to the president. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's not a real matter, but you know what? I also happen to have met the president before. Mm -hmm. So I know the channels well that I can take. I didn't go to meet the president through the sports ministry. Mm -hmm. You know, I went through the youth, whatever. Yes. And I can do that again mm -hmm. and have this complaint, you know. But I'm not that guy. Just approve my thing, you know. Yeah. And I just ask for a favor. Please do this, you know. Um, and they didn't do that. And for those that were asking, oh, do you need approval? Yes. Ask people that know. Mm. I think the husband is Brian or something. I don't know. Mm. You, you still need and then I asked some of my some people that are close to me, and I said, "It's an emergency. I need my kids to have this. Can you go and and speak to her in yes. person?" Yeah. And you know what the father said? Mm. Oh, maybe Timber should have a real manager that can manage his things. So mm. that that made it very personal yeah, yeah. when the father said that. You know, mm. uh, I don't know. I've never met these people, but for me, when I hear these things. And it's very personal to me, and especially to a person that has played, has done sport too. Yeah. You know, that's why I say she is the worst sports minister ever because she has done sports before. Before they were sports ministers, but they have never done sports. They don't know the suffering of how people do in the sports, but they have done well. And she has done sports. She knows the challenges and the things that happen in sport. She has done nothing. Look at soccer. You know what I'm saying? I'm not political. I'm targeting one person and one person only. Mm. I'm not a political guy. Mm -hmm. I don't go left or right. Yeah. I'm targeting one person that is a header to what I want. Mm. You understand? There's channels and whatsoever. Channels for what? Just an email saying, yes, approved. Mm. There's no channels. So it hasn't been approved It's yet. not approved. It's not approved. I fought three fights now in the UFC. I use South Africa now. Mm. I don't even look at the patch anymore. Mm. It's not cool. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not being political. People must not mistake in this. I love this country, whether it's bad or it's good. Mm -hmm. You know, I represent Zimbabwe. And I'm one of those guys who firmly believe that 
each one pick one. We cannot just expect the government to do things for us. Mm -hmm. We have to go out there sometimes ourselves and do something. That's why I do what I do in my village. Yeah. You know, because if I don't, no one will. Mm. And if we can have many people like that, Zimbabwe will be a better place. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And for this, it's personal with this minister. Yeah. It's personal. And. But can't you find any. Maybe. Uh, I'm not going to find. To no. Then the means that they want yeah. is. I had somebody contacted me. They want to have a coffee because of this whole thing that is happening. They want to have a coffee and all that. No, you don't have to have a coffee with me to have this thing resolved. Reply to the email that you got from the UFC. Mm. Simple and plain. Not mm. me. I don't it, have to meet still you. There, the, this email is still there. The, the embassy was sent. The, whoever was sent was sent. You know, It does not matter. Mm. I'm not trying to... I'm not a political guy. And I want to defend that because you know a lot of people think that I'm now being political or whatsoever. Mm. <laughs> Trust me, I'm not. I will never be. Mm -hmm. I love my country. Yeah. I love what's happening in my country. You know, it's nice to drive back home. Yeah. I was using my single road. The road is so nice. Mm -hmm. The last time I was in that road, it was portals. Mm. You know, things are changing in this country. The yeah. airport is getting better. Yeah. People complain because people want instant gratification. Mm -hmm. They want now. But things take time. Yeah, very true. And the country is going to become there. Mm -hmm. It's, it's going to get there. Mm -hmm. One thing people in this country need to be appreciative of is that as much as people think that things are not working and whatsoever, it's still one of the most mm. peaceful countries. Mm. Appreciate that. Other countries, people are getting killed. Very true. Day, broad light day. Yeah. Like, you know, be happy to be in a country where you are safe. You know, I mean, some people think, oh, yeah. it just maybe. Yeah. But, you know, it's a very beautiful country. The law works here. Mm -hmm. um, in my opinion, people might say, oh, because, you know, they've got their certain agendas. Exactly. But the real, like, you know, day-to-day -day law, mm -hmm works for us you know Very true. people are protected you when you walk out of there you are yes. safe you feel yeah, safe exactly when you walk out of south africa do you feel safe no <laughs> tell me do that <laughs> so how is the relationship now with the sports uh, governing uh, bodies which um uh, the src the ministry because you recently posted on your ex account uh, your ex account in a court um you know you said i stand by my country and love every every single development happening in my country. The roads are beautiful. Things are changing. But only one thing, sports is dying because we have the West Sports Minister who let her family run the department and of her course, meetings yes. are run by, the, by, by her husband. Yeah. Close court. I have, I have proof. Mm, but what do you mean by this? Yeah, it is what it is. I said what I say. Um... I, like I said, it's personal, especially when they came to me, they, when they said what they said mm -hmm. and said that, oh, maybe you must have a real agent. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't say that to me. You don't know me. Um, and whatsoever, man, wh what hurts me the most about this situation is because she was also in sport. Yeah. And she says, oh, my mother used to be selling donuts on the corner so that I can go to the Olympics. Right now, everything that your story is being tarnished because of your actions. Mm. You know, no one looks up to you. I don't look up to her. I used to sing the song, Kest Coventry, Kest, Kest Coventry. But now, you know what? I don't even want to talk about that. Let's leave that story. So you want I to... Am going, I am going to have that sorted by other yeah. people. You know, there's people that reached out today. They're going to sort it out mm -hmm. and get it sorted. Uh, I'm never going to want to speak to that woman. Um, her and the person that puts that General Molochwa, who put my number on the internet. I don't know how powerful is that man in this country. But if you think that you're powerful and you can just bully people and do what you're doing, putting my number on the internet, God bless you. Let's see. So you want to go to WWE WrestleMania as a wrestler or what? To watch. Come on. <laughs> Growing up, you grow up. No, I'm not going to do that. That stuff is dangerous. Yeah, man. yeah very true. No, like uh, WWE, oh, those guys are big, bro. Yes. I have yeah. met those guys. They are huge. <laughs> they are huge. Um... <laughs> Yeah, they they they're big. I've met them. <laughs> <laughs> they are big. I'm big, but they are big. But, yeah, but me. you're a fighter, my guy. No, no, I wanna go watch, bro. Oh, ah, yeah. it's an opportunity, bro. Yeah. I've got a good relationship with Dwayne Johnson. Yes. So why not? Why not <laughs> use my my brother DJ to get to the I mean to the opportunity I have with him to get to the WrestleMania and yes. watch this thing, you know? Yes. Ah oh my God, that's history, my brother. But <laughs> looking at it now, I don't think I'll be able to because I'm I'm going to be in fight camp, yes. getting ready for my fight. You know, mm -hmm. um, what pays the bills is winning fights, and uh, I have to keep training hard 
believe in myself, believe in God, and be what I want to be. You said there's a statement uh, that you said soon after your, your win uh, in May last year at a court. You said, the people who ridicule me, I hope the Lord forgives you. Close court. What did people say to you uh, that you still uh, uh, remember even now? Bro, I'm an elephant. Anything, like, I'm. Uh, uh, people were saying like this, you know, anything you say or do will be used against mm. you with me. With me. Yeah. Anything you say or do will be used against you. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I had a gym in South Africa, and I had this gym, which was like really non-profit. Mm -hmm. Um, and I had these kids that I used to have, some Zimbabweans, mm -hmm. uh, some South Africans, Nigerians, Zambians, and all that, you know. And um, and I had people also in my gym and the people that I was working with, you know. Like, And when I lost that fight, when I went back, you know, I realized true colors of the people, you know, when I lost the first UFC fight. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, okay, 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 okay. And bro, I was renting a flat out in Midrand for wow. people to stay for free mm. for these boys, some of these boys. Yeah. And you get there and you realize, oh my God, okay. Mm -hmm. God just showed me, you know, he, that's why I say it's the best loss because if I didn't lose that fight, these people were not going to reveal who they yes, are. Yes. I had a guy that was my close friend, you know, and um, I he revealed himself too, you know, and it's life. And you know, like you even go on YouTube, there's some guy that was saying all kinds of stuff about me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like for me, I'm one of those guys that if I talk a story with you, sometimes I only tell you. And when I hear this story with them, mm -hmm. I know it's you. Yeah. And when I had some stuff that that guy was saying, I know who, who I only told, who yes. knows this. Yes. And I realized, you know, um, I, I, I need to change my environment. So I wanted to go to train in Germany to just change my environment. And I saw happened that, you know, I got my German visa rejected. Mm -hmm. And then I went to... I realized I've got only one visa, American visa. Mm -hmm. Why not use it? Then I went to America to train to uh, Miami. And I trained for that fight. You know, I cried almost every single day when I was in Miami mm. leading up to that fight. Because when I got to Miami, I was broke. Uh, when I went to Miami, I didn't even use the money that... I didn't, I didn't use my money to pay for the flight. Mm. Because I didn't have money. You know, when you lose the first fight in the UFC, like the UFC, like before you perform, right? Is that when you had uh, like uh, seven dollars in your account? Yeah, so I want to tell you that. Mm. So what happened is when you lose it, leading up to the fight, I'm a high achiever guy that wants to set a standard. So I thought I was going to win. Um, then, you know, I had these debts. And also like with this flat that I had that I was renting out for these boys that to stay, I also borrowed money from somebody, one of my friends. I still need to pay him back, mm -hmm. you know? Um to rent out a flat for other people. So you see, I I went in debt trying to please others, you know? Oh, yeah. um, because, you know, I had a gym, they were staying in the gym, then the landlord for the gym said, Tim, but this is not a residential place. You need to get these guys out of here. Mm -hmm. And then I rented a flat. I made a plan. I was asked my friend, I say, hey, please, can you borrow me money? I need to, to rent out a flat. And, you know, I paid deposit and everything and get them in there. And yeah. I was buying groceries for them every week. Mm -hmm. I was... When I have extra cash, I'll go to the shopping mall with this a line of seven boys. Yeah. Buying clothes for them. And, um, you know, if I'm generous enough, I've put in something, money, I'll take them out and do some things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was, I don't have to, I didn't have to look after these boys. Yeah, yeah, they have, yeah. I did a lot of things that their own mothers or their own fathers would never do for yes, them. Yes, sure. And, um, and, you know, it's, it, it was just, like, painful when I lost that fight because mm -hmm. I was in big debt. And, you know, you lose a fight and, you I didn't know the tax was so much. <laughs> I got tax 30% straight off the bat. And I had, the UFC pays, when you're studying, they pay for only one cornerman, me and the cornerman one. And, you know, I'm a guy that wants to bring everybody with. So I said to the UFC, ah, you can deduct from my fight pass and take money for these two guys, for the two extra coaches. And we went there a little bit earlier, but it was my first UFC fight. You want to make sure that you are there mm -hmm. earlier. You know, to a point, I was sleeping on the floor leading up to the fight. Wow. The day of the fight, the day before the fight, I was sleeping on the floor because we had only one hotel room yes. for four, four yes. people. Yes, You know? Um, and I didn't want these guys to feel uncomfortable. So I put them on the bed and I slept on the mm -hmm. floor, you know, because I was like, I'm, I'm the one who brought them here. So, so humble, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, 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 it's not humble, I don't like that word. <laughs> uh, but I was just trying to be myself and make sure that these guys are comfortable. And, you know, we go out there and I get the job done. I win. Unfortunately, I lost. 
and then with all the sacrifice you go home and you are nothing you know and i started seeing the true colors of the people around me um one thing you know i've got a very good manager me and my manager is like your friends your tight friends five and six we're not friends you, <laughs> you tell me Temba, five and six. you tell me Temba, i'm not your friend yeah. i'm not your fan yeah i don't know who i am but i'm gonna tell you everything straightforward you know after i lost that fight he called me to the to his house and he turned me straight up he's like Temba, listen here you don't want to be the guy this was his words Temba, listen here you don't want to be the guy it was hard talk because you know what i just lost his wife is sitting there and everybody's in the house but you know i'm about to leave to come back to africa here you know and he spins he walked up and down up and down and he's got my manager i think he's got quarter one quarter of the ufc mm. roster i'm the i was in that position the least guy he needed to tell this yes you know but he felt the need to tell me this that's why i love this man so much he said to me timber i'm gonna be honest with you you want to talk you want to know the truth he says well, i looked at your fight you were good your striking was good your wrestling was good um everything was good but there's something there that was not clicking your mma it looks like from what i see you train this 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 and you try to put them together yourself mm -hmm. which is not right because we do are in the ufc and then your cornerman it was all over your coaches were all over mm -hmm. and uh i'm not saying speaking bad about them they're not bad coaches but they're not the right coaches for this mm. for this you in the ufc yeah. right now um this is the ufc we don't have time this is what they said we don't yeah. have time to correct errors as we go. You don't want Temba, the UFC, to go to Africa and your kids ask you, why did you not fighting in the UFC? And you say, because I lost and they mm, cut me. Mm. You need to come to live here in America. You can stay in my house and find a gym here and train. Then he sent me to a gym. He changed, they changed my flight. He said, go find a gym today, man, the following Monday. They said, go find a gym. I went to the gym I didn't like. Then I messaged him straight forward. I said, Jason, I don't like this one. Mm. Then he says, okay, cool. Then I said, I'll go to Africa and make it work. Then I went to Africa. I went to South Africa. Then I, I realized what I realized. And I said to him, I had a friend in Germany. Then I wanted to go to Germany. I told him I want to go to Germany. Then he said, oh, then that's great. Mm. He was happy because when I left, I could see I left there and he was very sad. Wow. Because he's like, you are really leaving and you're going to fail. You know what? Uh, so Dwayne Johnson, DJ. You know, The Rock <laughs> I came through and I remember uh, his, um, uh, his first tweet. I think that was his first engagement, right? He said, and I caught, uh, this is crazy to see and uh, crazy to see and brings back many emotions and memories. $7.49 in the Fighters Bank account. I once had seven bucks too. I have been there on that grind. Got your bag, brother. I will help you. You got this. I will, t I will be in touch. Close cut. That was, uh, I mean, uh, the beginning of the happier days for you, all right? Is that so, Tembo? Sorry, I was just replying. Yeah. Sorry about that, Ola. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the, in the, the thing with the seven bucks. So what happened with the seven bucks? I got sick on the day of the fight, um, the second UFC fight with flu. Um, you know, again, all against me, right? I bought medicine. I had eighty dollars, eighty-seven dollars. Then I bought medicine. For some reason, I don't know. When you use this app, mm. it doubles your things. Then the bill went to eighty dollars, and I was left, <laughs> I was left with seven dollars forty-nine cents. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was CVVV something like that. I bought, yes. but I bought a lot of med because yeah. I wanted to make sure I'm fine by the time mm. I fight. Mm. So it was three a.m. and it's the day I'm fighting. So I, I saw how much money I had in my bank account it was seven dollars forty-nine cents. I screenshot that because you know in the UFC if you put a good performance you get an extra fifty thousand dollars just outside of your 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 fight pass. Yeah. So I was like, I wanna get the bonus today, and I wanna post this seven dollars, and when I get the bonus, I wanna inspire people. Yes. I didn't get the bonus. I uh, got a little something, but you know, um, I, it's it's I, it's it's something that I felt the need to post and mm -hmm. say, you know what, guys, I want my fight. I'm grateful. Yeah. Look where I was in the morning, you know. Yes. Uh, I'm just happy to have had won this. And ESPN picked up that and they put it out. Mm. And then a few days later, Dwayne Johnson picked it up through his bodyguard, one of his mm. bodyguards. She saw it and showed him. And then that's when he tweeted that. Mm. And, um, you know, just goes to show you. And you know what's funny? is a day that I had just finished building a boho in my village. Oh, wow. So we had just finished building so the, the boho. So the, the day you posted, you were actually in Zimbabwe? No, I was here. 
You was, you was I was I was I just finished building the boho in, wow. in my village. Yes. And I was about to go edit the video because the guys that paid for the boho they yes. wanted something to be posted. Oh, yes. So I was going into the shower to shower yes. so we can go with this guy to edit the video. Exactly. And then I saw the post and my manager to call me is like, "Hey, did you see your post, your Twitter?" And I saw, "Oh my god." Because for some reason my Twitter started blowing, mm, people following me. Exactly, exactly. Uh like I went from having 2000 followers to 40 something oh, thousand followers. Oh jeez. I went from having 40,000 followers on my Instagram to 300,000, 350,000 followers. Ooh. Yeah, you know. That's not a and shock. Yeah, so, um, um, but this is after the, also the whole thing with the house. Yeah, yeah. But just that, it picked, yes. you know. So, I mean, I mean, tell us, how did you feel, you know, when you were, you know, handed those keys uh, from being homeless uh, to no, a house our, owner in America? Like, um I don't know if it was homeless because I was staying in the gym. Mm. I was staying on the couch. It's not homeless. You are staying on the couch, oh, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was staying on the couch. My family was we're in South Africa, staying at the house that we were renting. But you know, I was staying on the. It's not really homeless. It's on the streets. But mm. you know, he saw that I did the selfless act. I think you know, DJ is a nice man. Mm -hmm. uh, he saw what I did. That okay, this guy had this and. His body got told him that, oh, do you know that this guy that had seven bucks, you look what he went and did in his yes, village. Yes. Then that's what drove him to try and help me. Mm. It was not just the seven bucks. Yes. What drove me, him to want to help me is because he said, because you could have taken that money yeah. and do something with it. Yes. Because people are greedy in this world, bro. Very true. Uh, and when people, like, this is the biggest thing that I always say, never be selfish. Like I always say, even the boys away I used to train, I say to them, if you, I, if you are selfish, I don't like you. Because I feel like people that are greedy and selfish, they, they, they're not supposed to be here, man. Mm -hmm. And um, you need to be, if to get, you need to give. Mm -hmm. And he realized that, and look, he, what he did for me. Mm -hmm. I was also renting a few months ago, I was renting a, a house for people. Yeah. And it just goes full circle. Like, mm. this is what I tell you. If you give, you will get. You get. I don't give so that I can get. But mm -hmm. if you give, the universe that hears and sees things mm -hmm. will give you back. Yes. In broader, bigger ways. So have you managed to, to take your family now to America? My family, we live in America, all of us. All of us? My, all of you? My kids already speak Spanish. Wow. Yeah, my daughter speaks Spanish already. Uh -huh. And she, we have been there only for six months. She's already speaks Spanish. Uh -huh. um, that's what makes me happy. Great. You know, we all live there. My wife, we're there. Everybody. It's just hard because, you know, we miss, we miss home sometimes, you know. We miss the normal life, um, but if you want to achieve anything great, you gotta go through these things with that are uncomfortable. Mm. And I'm very, very comfortable. Your with first being. time meeting uh, Dwayne Johnson. Uh -huh. how, how was it like? It was a blessing. Um, was it the first day? I mean, meeting him when he said, when he handed, handed the keys. It was. Oh, so they asked me, they asked me to do an interview with his people because they said that he was gonna come three days after that. Yes. Then they told me he was gonna come three days after that. Mm -hmm. He wanted to do the interview first, and his people come to see because DJ is like a, the president. Oh yeah, in America. Yeah, um, he's that powerful. Mm -hmm. um, so I believed it because they say his bodyguards will come and check mm -hmm. the premises and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and see if it's safe for him to come here. Yeah, I say okay, cool. Um, then they were doing the interview with me and stuff like that, and the lady was asking me very very sensitive topics and mm -hmm. very very emotional. Uh, topics where I was too engaged and mm -hmm. I didn't even feel that he was behind me. And when I made, when I saw him, you know, just being in present in front of him, I didn't know everything that he was gonna do, mm. the house and stuff. But being in front of him, mm -hmm. I was just, I cried, you know. And I told him that I'm going to be a champion. Yes. And um, you're a champion too, you know, because you know a man like that too. I, I don't know what I was thinking, but I cried and I told him that. And yeah. it's a promise that I have to fulfill and that I am going to fulfill. Mm. That's uh, that's very powerful, and I'm happy for you, my brother. You're now living in a you know a very expensive house in America. I, I'm, I'm so proud of you, my brother. So you yeah, say it's in not, an interview, it's not, it's not with, me. Um, it's with, not um, me. It's God's doing. It's His doing, and uh, God put me on earth maybe for that. Mm -hmm. um, even DJ, when he had seven bucks, yeah, his father was a wrestler. Mm. He could. His father was earning a lot of money, but he wasn't having seven bucks. So it just tells you, like, sometimes God put us on earth for a certain reason. He was born in there in Hawaii or America. Mm -hmm. And look at him. I'm from Bikita. The seven back story that connected us. Maybe one day this seven back story, I'll connect with someone else yes. one day, you know, yes. and change someone's life. But 
Yeah, I believe that everything that we have, this life that we live, it was made before we were here by God. Very true. So, Temba, how do you prepare for a fight? I mean, mentally and physically. I train a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm a very insecure guy in terms of my my work ethic. You know, mm -hmm. I work very very hard. I know, mm -hmm. but I'm always insecure. I'm always thinking that it's not enough. Mm -hmm. So I train very very hard. Yeah, to a point where I know. I've done everything. I look myself in the mirror and say, I've done everything in my power to win. Yeah. If I don't win, it's n it was not meant to be. A very true. Uh, there's a there's a lesson with it. But I've done everything in my power to win. Mm -hmm. I've lived the perfect life in terms of like as an athlete to yes, win. Yes, yes. I eat well. The last time, that's why when I'm here now, I'm drinking a lot of Coca-Cola, all the junk food. Yeah. The last time I had that was in August. August. Last, last year. year. Mm. I had pizza last year in August. Mm. So after the fight, I had my manager buying a lot of pizzas for me. And yeah. for me to, because you know what? Um, I disciplined myself like that leading up to a fight. Like when I go back now, straight away, mm -hmm. I disciplined myself like that, you know. I don't have any friends Yes. outside of the gym. Okay. Even the friends in the gym, mm. they are training partners yeah. that I happen to like. Oh, some yeah. of them. You know, yeah. And most of them. And um, we interact at a level of professionalism, mm -hmm. simple, simple professional Listen, where we, we interact in the gym training mm -hmm. and I'm out. I right. go home, sleep. Mm. I go to train and I go home to sleep. Miami is a big city mm -hmm. and there's the beach and everything. Ever since I've been there, I've only been to the beach three times. Wow. Only because my daughter wants, wants to go there. So what would you consider the most memorable moment in your MMA career uh, so far? The most memorable moment in my career so far is what? <laughs> Bro, the thing is, it's pre-lived. Mm -hmm. You know, do you understand what I'm saying? When yeah. I say it's pre-lived. Mm. It was... Yeah, like everything that's, that happens in my life, like it's pre-lived. So mm -hmm. it's not like the greatest moment. It's already pre-lived. When I win, I force myself to have uh, the excitement when I win. Yeah. I force myself to have the excitement for the show, but mm. I already know. I already When I step in there, I already know the yes. results. Yes. I already know how it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Like you see, before my fight, I wrote down why, how I was going to be the guy. Yes. You know, yes. I, yeah, it's pre-lived. Mm. So there's not been, it's still to come. The day I yeah. am going to become the champion mm -hmm. probably is the day. Wow. So what advice would you, would you give to, I mean, uh, young people, young athletes uh, aspiring to pursue a career in MMA? What I would do and say to the young artist uh, who wants to to be in MMA, be yourself firstly. Mm -hmm. Don't fit in secondly. Uh, because, you know, being yourself and not fitting in can create a great story for yourself. Mm -hmm. Look at me. I'm the guy that is the old one. Yeah. The guy that a lot of, a lot of people don't like. Mm. You can like me or hate me. Uh, I'm still going to be myself. I'm yeah. authentically myself. Mm -hmm. You know, Um be yourself. That's the most important thing. Very true. Be yourself and work extremely hard and pray to God because this this sport is a savage sport. It can be taken away from you any minute. And mm -hmm. if you don't have that protection from God, it can eat you. You don't have to be protected from fighting. Mm. It's the people around the, the sport. Yeah. You need to be protected with many things. And you need to pray to God all the time because if you don't, you get lost. Mm. Uh, it can eat you. Yeah. And truly, 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 like I'm, I mean this when I say this, mm -hmm. the sport is full of of people with no very good intentions. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of people are very genuine. And if you don't pray, you end up succumbing and falling into traps of, of things that you will bring you down, mm. even if you work hard. So be yourself firstly. And yeah. Right. So are there any upcoming fights or projects you'd like to share with uh, your fans here at Temba if we conclude? I don't have fans. I have family. If mm. you're someone that supports me, you are my family. You yeah, know? If right. you support me from your mm. heart, mm. Mm. not those ones that support when it suits them or when it's beneficial. Mm -hmm. Those that truly support me, whether you're from India, Pakistan, America, Hawaii, Brazil, if you're a person that when I step, let's say, when I step in that cage on the... Um, on the 3rd of February, you were never shaking, wanting me to win truly. Mm, mm. You are not a fan. Yeah. You are my family. Powerful. And um, that's that's how I look at it. Fans come and go. Family stays. And I have family that is not my family. Mm. You understand that? Yes, I get it. Yeah, so 
this is coming from a man that is family that is not his family mm-hmm. and i'm saying to you if you are a fan you're not a fan no if you are someone that wants me to do well mm-hmm. that is truly supporting me from the bottom of their heart mm-hmm. from the bottom of their heart you are not a fan you are my family and family stays uh, what is that mangoro mera you know it's that oh yes 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 <laughs> no man uh, i work too hard to do those Bro, I believe in God. I don't believe in anything. Mm. I don't believe in anything else. I believe in myself. Yeah. And I believe in God. Mm-hmm. I work so hard. Yeah. Uh, that's it. I people think people see 30 seconds. Mm-hmm. They don't see six months. Yeah, yeah, sure. You understand? Mm-hmm. I work hard extremely all the time to a point where my coaches chase me out of the gym. Yes. From when I started this sport. Mm-hmm. Not only now. From when I said this sport, go to my old coaches, they'll tell you, even if some of them, I don't talk to them, mm-hmm. some of them, because, you know, people feel entitled in terms of places. Yeah. But they will only, t- you can say Temba is all kind of things, but you can never say Temba is a lazy guy. Very true. You're a hard worker. Are you building here in Zimbabwe, your own house here in Zimbabwe? Um, honestly, you know, for me, I am, I, I'm going to come here and live here in Zimbabwe. Um, I'm going to do something for my young cousin. Yes. My brother cousin whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do something for him because you know what he's showing me something that you know he's very mature. He's mm-hmm. 21, very mature and he's showing me something. So I'm going to do something for him but you know I I'm a guy that does all, really love the city. Mm-hmm. I love um I love the village. The, the, the rural village, type yeah, of life. Yeah, yeah. But you know like I said to you I I'm w- with my village you know and things like that. One day I'm I'm I'm, I'm looking to buy a farm this year. Okay. In Zimbabwe. Oh yes. Yeah, I've already done some inquiries. I want to oh, so start building there and I, I'm, I'm going there. to buy a farm. I'm telling you this, I'm going to buy a farm, mm-hmm. create a sports center at my farm. Wow. Uh where it's like for MMA and all kinds of sports. Yeah. Where the kid and then uh, the kids will also have an opportunity to like people that don't not the kids like people that want to do sport mm-hmm. and they don't have the means, they can be on the farm. Yeah. Grow their own vegetables. Yes. I have drums on the farm. Mm-hmm. Um you know i'll have drums on the farm grow their own stuff and they can feed themselves mm-hmm. and focus on sport yeah. when opportunities come mm-hmm. i don't want nothing yeah all i want is to guide people in the right way because i've been there mm. i've done that mm. and you know i want to be able to to tell these kids don't sign this contract yeah you know sign this contract wow. this one is better that is not because i've been there and you know a lot of talent in africa is lost through these contracts Thank you so much uh, Temba Goriba for coming through to the All of Seven podcast show. Maybe your parting remarks as we conclude. Uh I mean it's a blessing to be here. Yeah. Probably the first interview I've ever had in Zimbabwe with someone in Zimbabwe. Very true. Yeah, uh, I was trying to avoid you. Yes. But um you know like people that are persistent it's something, you know. I'm a guy that try to see, to see the situation first. You know, there's many guys that ask me for interviews and stuff like that, but, you know. For me, I'm attracted to people like you. Yeah. I'm attracted to people that want more out of life. Yes. You know, I am attracted to people that have uh, genuine care for the um, for, for like they, that they have genuine care to grow. To grow, yes. Yeah, Growth. you know, not the fly by night guys, mm. you know. I I've got a lot of guys asking me in Zimbabwe for interviews, but sometimes like I'm going to have an interview with you. Mm-hmm. Then it's only probably the only interview that you're going to have. Yes. And then what does that have you mm. you taking my energy out of mm. me, you know? Mm. I know from this interview you're going to probably get inspired. I'm inspired. Sure. Very true. And then you move on to the next interview. Exactly. And you know, I don't want to do an interview with someone mm. then they just vanish out of the air. I'm wasting my energy and my Very time, true. brother. Very true. You know, I'm I'm inspired by people that want more out of life and you wow. know, I was avoid I avoided you the last time. Uh-huh. I avoided you, you know, um and you know when you message me and say you know and when you say to me I'll come wherever you are and do the yes. interview there you know yeah. just showed me what kind of a person you are mm. as a persistent man yeah. the man that knows what he knows what you want mm-hmm. and uh, my brother i wish you nothing but the best i hope this podcast goes up and up wow one day you become like joe rogan wow not, not like him yeah. you become bigger than bigger that bigger than that but one thing i can tell you man just keep doing yourself a favor mm-hmm. be you great Don't try to fit in in this world, you know. Mm-hmm. And yeah, ask tough questions too. Don't ask yeah. the uh and don't don't be fear to be judged, you know. Mm-hmm. Like I saw a thing recent today like we love ourselves so much and then we seem to care what other people say after mm-hmm. that. You know? Very true. 
be yourself. This is let, let, like you're in a great position. You've yeah. got a great platform, you know. This this podcast, I hope it grows. Yeah. And um, whoever is backing you, and you know, I know, I know you back yourself. Yeah. And probably believe in God. Yeah. But obviously, there's someone backing and helping course, you. You know. Of course. Like yeah. this guy Tinashe. What? What's that? Tinashe Mtari is giving you the place here to do this. You know, I look at that guy. You know, like those are the people like I get inspired by. Mm. I don't have to interact with them, but from far I look. Yeah. Like you know, there's a guy. I'm I'm about to, I'm ranting off. You know, yes. supposed to close the show, but I just want to tell you. No, I understand. Yeah. What I what I what, what inspires mm. me, like these things, people like you that want more out of life. Yes. You know, you were at Star FM, but look at you. Yeah. You know, you could have stayed there and be safe, mm -hmm. have a salary. Yes. But look at you. You took a chance on yourself. That's mm. growth. Yeah. That's a growth mindset. That's the people that I like. Mm. Like you know, let's say Tinashem Terrace, he's doing well here, mm. and taking a chance in life. You know, those mm. are the people that you want to be associated with. And this comes to it, like, you know, there's another guy. I'm inspired by him. Mm -hmm. He has got a village, I think it's a village six somewhere. Okay. I don't know his name. Mm -hmm. uh, what's his name? Take, Terry. Terry. Oh, Terry from yeah, Mondoro. Uh, um, uh? That, from Mondoro, from Mondoro, yes, that guy. Wow, that guy inspired yeah. me because, you know what, I'm thinking to myself, where I'm building my library in my village, mm. There's a lot of space. I'm like, I want to maybe make something like that, you know. He's changing people's lives yeah, in a true. better way. Mm. Of course, it's a business. Mm -hmm. But, you know, those are the people that you get inspired. So, like, when people, like, when I'm here, people want to chill. They want to just chill. <laughs> for the, I don't chill for the sake of chilling. Yes. yes. I don't hang around to, with people for the sake of hanging around. Mm. Life is a give and take. I have to get something from you. Yes. Not money, not anything. Yes. Energy. 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 I, I like that. Uh, and I'm getting this inspirational like energy from yes. you, you know. Yes. And when I leave Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. I carry this power with me. Very true. Maybe that's why my punches are so hard. <laughs> you know, because I try to interact with the positive people, people yes. that want more out of this life. Yes, true. And bless you, my brother, man. It's a blessing to be on your show. And my thank pleasure. you so much to, you know, obviously some things I said here might be controversial, but it is yes. what it is. It's yes. life. Um, st I tend to be corrected, and I'm a human being. I am able to say sorry when I have to. Great. Um, that's that's being human. Yeah, being but human. yeah, in the middle of emotions, I say my mind. Mm -hmm. Great. So profound from uh, my brother here, Timber Goriba, all the way from United States of uh, United States of America. No, but from Zimbabwe. He is from Zimbabwe, but went to USA. <laughs> <laughs> Doing well there, and more punches, more punches, guys. You guys from America. All over the world, Temba is coming for you. He's here. No, he's, he's here. He's here uh, already. More punches, my brother. More punches. More of punches course. coming. The next one will be less than. Uh, uh, I don't want to put myself on the spot, but I would like to be faster. Oh, yeah. Faster. How fast? Yeah. Let's see. People from my village, they want 15 seconds. 15 Let's, seconds. See. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> thank you so much, Temba. Bless you, my brother. Okay, bro. Uh, thank you so much. Okay.